Nothing says Christmas like toilet paper rolls, and you will believe me after this first project. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to split or cut a toilet paper a roll not quite in half. One part is going to be a little longer than the other one. I also have to note that this was an inspiration from Me Cottage Crafts, and I'll have her link below. If you love anything shabby chic, you will really enjoy her channel. What I'm doing here now is I'm cutting up my little form and this believe it or not is going to turn out to be a dress form as you can see i've already cut a little bit of the cleavage by just cutting a v in the front when i folded the um, toilet paper roll in half and now i'm just rounding out the back so it has a nice deep back now what i'm going to do here is i'm actually going to cut what would be darts if you were sewing or if you know how to sew you know that darts are very important to give uh, any kind of fabric its shape so we're using the same technique here by putting darts in the bust line and in the waistline. So here I'm cutting it at the half line and in the back and in the front. Now taking my glue gun, oh, and let me say that the bottom part will be a skirt. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm making sure that I make darts, most especially in the back because we want to have a nice little derriere area. So I'm also going to use another piece of toilet paper roll. It's probably cut in a quarter of the toilet paper roll and that is what's going to glue the two parts together, the top, the bust line, and the waist, and of course, then the skirt. So here I'm just gluing together what are the darts. And I have to apologize, I didn't realize that the white background with the white toilet paper roll uh, makes it a little difficult to see, but I hope you understand what I'm doing here by gluing the darts together. And <laughs> All right, once we have the feminine shape created in, on the top, again, we have to make sure that we go all the way around because we have to make sure that it has a, a nice slim waistline. Not unlike mine, that is not a slim waistline. I'm, I'm chonky. I'm a chonky girl, but I'm happy. I'm healthy that's what matters most so once you have what is going to be considered the bra now we have to start looking at the skirt and the waistline using the same technique that we did for the bust line we are now creating a waistline what I tried to make sure of is to create all the darts on what would be the posterior part or the derriere part of our little skirt here. So there are very little cuts in the front. As you can see, I made two darts just to make sure that it uh, slims it down in the waist. And there I'm just gluing everything together. Now I'm using hot glue, not very comfortable, not very easy. And you can use uh, white glue if that's easier for you. And see if we just put those pieces together, it would make for a very awkward looking dress form. So I'm just rolling that smaller toilet pe paper roll part a little smaller so that it would fit inside to the bust line and would easily connect to what is our skirt. This is such a fun way to use toilet paper rolls in a very different way and to create very feminine shapes for um, dresses or dress forms. And I'm telling you, once you get this started and you realize how fun and easy this is, if you have a little girl, you are going to go nuts making these beautiful dress form ornaments. So now we're just gluing the top and the bottom together with the waistline. And what I did afterwards was decoupage them. So you can see on one, I used book pages to decoupage all over the form and other one, I just used plain paper. Now here I'm using tool to create my skirt, of course, for my dress form. So I'm just using gray and pink tool. I didn't want it to be too pinky or too girly. I wanted a little bit of a sophisticated look. Not only that, I just happen to have silver gray uh, tool. So I'm going to use what I have in my stash because I am abundantly gifted with lots of stuff. And here I'm now using satin ribbon to create the bust line, as you can see the corset. And I'm also going to create the skirt just by rolling some of that beautiful, it's like a blush pink fabric or satin um, ribbon, I should say, and using it all over what's going to be the under skirt of the doll itself, because now I'm going to add the tool and I'm also going to add a beautiful silver gray lace underneath as well, just to give it a little more oomph. Here I'm adding my beautiful trim and this is just trim that I, again, I found in my stash and it's silver 
with um, pink. It's just the perfect color combination and it matched that satin ribbon perfectly. That's why I went with this beautiful silver gray um, tool. Now I'm just adding more trim. I've added more lace and of course a little ribbon the same color as the ribbon I had before and of course one more little gilded rose or sparkly rose to make my little dress complete. Now to make it really special we need to have a special way to hang it on the tree and what better than a gilded hanger. That's right. I just took some gold wire and twisted it into a little mini hanger to make it something really cute to hang on the tree. And you can see just how easy it is just to like mold or bend into shape and twist into shape a tiny little hanger, which is perfect for this little designer dress designed by you, of course, and anyone else that you'd like to share this wonderful craft with. I hope you have fun with this and make some for yourself for your own Christmas tree this year. I want to take a moment to thank Liana DIY for asking me to co-host with the Crafty Quinn and Crafty Kathy this wonderful playlist of Christmas in July. Please check out all of these wonderfully, beautifully talented ladies as they bring to you some wonderful ideas for Christmas in July. Now let's get back to the rest of this project and I hope you check out the rest of the playlist as well. Don't say I didn't warn you, this truly deserves a cuteness award. I mean, how can I miss with something so adorable that I found at the thrift store just recently? And I thought, oh my gosh, this is so perfect for, you know, Christmas in July, shabby chic style. How can I miss? And again, I'm inspired by Teresa of Our Green Acres, who found a larger size little wooden hobby horse and did something very similar to what I am going to do right now. So there I ripped off its mane and I cleaned it with some crud cutter. And here I am just painting it up a beautiful creamy white color, which is perfect, I think, for Christmas and for any time of the year. One of the things I love about this hobby horse, and here is my collection of lace and ribbon, which I'm going to use for the mane and the tail. But one of the things I love about this hobby horse is that it's not necessarily Christmas, but oh, what sweet childlike Christmas vibes it gives you when you add this to your decor. So what I created is a mane of, or a, I'm sorry, I should say a tail of beautiful ribbons and laces. Now I'm using my hot glue to create kind of a crown for the mane because I didn't have anywhere where I can just glue the mane and I didn't want you to see just the mane glued to the horse. So here I'm creating a beautiful gilded crown that is going to house all of the beautiful ribbon and laces that is going to be part of the mane. Now, I will ask for your forgiveness because I didn't get the film of me actually putting this on because I was distracted and uh, gluing it on to the horse or to the hobby horse. And all I did was split it in half and there you can see that I created the cute little mane holder or crown for the ribbon and lace mane. Grab another toilet paper roll because here comes another wonderful idea. Again, this was inspired by many other crafters and actually I have also remember seeing my grandmother creating this way back in the day. But this is just such a cute little craft that I hope you adopt this and add it to your own shabby chic ideas for Christmas this year. So what I did here was I cut the toilet paper roll in half and I cut an oval or an egg shape kind of shape from what's going to be the front of our ballet slipper. This is what we're creating. Once again, I'm creating darts so that I can make a closed toe for the ballet slipper toe. And I'm using a little bit of the toilet paper roll, uh, cardboard or whatever that is, or cardstock you can use as well. And I created an um, oblong shape or a circle shape. And again, adding darts so that I can shape it properly for the heel and the toe of my ballet slipper. I think this is the hardest part of the whole project because once you have it all together, it's so much fun 
to decorate. So if you can make a whole bunch of them all at once and then whenever you want to sit down and decorate them, you can sit down and have fun. Or create a whole bunch of these little ballet slippers for a bunch of little girls that are coming over to you know spend the night and they can embellish it however they like. They can paint it, they can use paper mache. Here I'm using paper mache just to strengthen um, the toe, the ballet toe shoe, I guess you should call it. And also just to um, soften up the edges of all those darts. Um, and you can see I have another one waiting in the wings. I didn't have a chance to finish the second one, but at least the first one is completed and it looks uh, adorable. Now I'm just taking some of this leftover satin fabric that I have. You can use ribbon, you can use paper, however it is that you want to decorate your ballet slipper is completely up to you. Now because I did do some paper mache on this and I noticed that this satin material was very thin, well first of all, before I go ahead of myself, I do want to line the inside of this beautiful little satin slipper or ballet slipper, however you want to call it, so it looks really nice. Look at that. So you can look inside the shoe and see how cute it looks. Now because I noticed that the satin was very thin, I decided to paint over the um, paper, the book paper that I used to paper mache. Again, you can use white paper or white tissue paper so that you don't have that issue. Now what I did here was I just rolled the satin fabric right around the entire shoe and I made sure to create the point and the heel and then after I had completed that, that's when I'm going to cut open what's going to be the top of the shoe so you can see um, where the little foot would go. But I thought this was an easier way to do it instead of, um, I don't know, just, I tried other ways and it was just so much easier just to cut off the top and create the little hole for your foot or for the little foot. Now I'm adding lace embellishments. So I'm telling you, if you have leftover lace, you are going to really enjoy making these tiny cute little slippers. And again, this is very sugar plum fairy. So if you have a nutcracker theme, for your Christmas tree and you don't know how to make these ballet slippers, believe me, this is going to look absolutely gorgeous on your nutcracker tree, on any tree, for <laughs> for example, and especially if you can make them in red or green or use pastel colors like I'm using here. I think it's just adorable. And here I'm adding more. This is just adding lace and ribbons and flowers and pearls. And you just go nuts with this, ladies, and have fun with it. And at the very least, always add a little pin or some glitter or pearls. And just to give it a final touch at uh, the very end for this beautiful little ballet slipper. So I hope you try this for yourselves. And if you do, please let me know how you did it, how you decorated it. If you like shabby chic, I'm sure this has happened to you. You walk into an antique store and you see one of these vintage Victorian stockings for Christmas and wonder, ooh, that would be so adorable to have in my own decor. But then you look at the price and you're shocked. So you go online and try to buy a pattern, but once again, you see the price and you stay a little shocked. So I decided to create my own pattern and offer it to you for free for a vintage Victorian shabby chic stocking for your home decor. And there is a stocking cut out and all I did was use two eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper and stick them together or tape them together. Now I'm going to use this beautiful peacock blue color and it's just some satin that I happen to have in my stash. As you can see, I'm just using a very simple stitch to go all around. Now I will tell you, I did create an inner lining for this, but I cut off, and you're going to think it's strange, I cut off what is the toe and the heel, but you'll understand after this next step. So here I am just using a very simple stitch, making sure that there aren't any puckers or gathers as I go around the heel of this shoe. The heel is the most difficult part. I'll tell you, it is really hard. And you have to make sure in the areas that uh, go around that you you cut little uh, divots, I don't know what else to call it, darts, so that when you turn it inside out, it keeps the beautiful shape that you have created and that you have sewn. 
So now in the toe and the heel of this boot, I am including or I am stuffing it with some cotton balls. That's all you really need. You don't need to buy any kind of fancy stuffing, just a few little cotton balls just to give it some shape. And as you can see, there is the lining sitting right beside um, my boot. So all I did is I used the same pattern and I cut off the boot, uh, heel and toe. And there you can see that I've already included the boot inner lining so that it doesn't go into the cotton balls. You understand what I'm saying, right? Like it's a sock within a sock, I guess. So here, all I'm doing is the embellishing. This is the most fun. Once you have your stocking done, just sit there, have, you know, a nice cup of tea or cocoa, or I don't know, I guess it's too hot because it's Christmas in July. So uh, I don't know, have a cold, uh, hot chocolate shake. You can have a hot chocolate shake. It's delicious, actually. A little bit, you know, of hot chocolate. And then, you know, you add some ice cream to it and a little bit of cinnamon. It's delicious. Anyway, let's go on and continue adding this beautiful crystal fringe that, again, was part of my stash. And I'm going to continue adding, making it. I don't know why. I, I felt like a very Frenchy kind of color scheme with this blue and the, the faded gold and now I'm going to add some gold trim. So just have fun with all the trim you have around the house. Just start gathering all your lace, all your trims, all your ribbons and have fun with this. And again, you can create this in whichever color or style that you want. This would be beautiful as well if it's red satin or green satin or even black. Can you imagine black and gold and pink? It would be beautiful. And here I am creating um, now somehow it looks a little bit like a cowboy boot. I don't know. I think I made a mistake there, but I don't care. I think it looks cute anyway. So I continued with that same shape and added some pearls as well. Now here I am adding this trim that happens to have like interlocking pearls and ribbon. And I thought it would be perfect to create lacing up the front of the boot. I mean, after all, it's a Victorian boot. It has to have lacing. And I didn't want to have to, you know, create the holes and get the grommets out and all that stuff. So I'm using this beautiful trim as my lacing. My lacing? I guess it's lacing. My eyelets. My, yeah, my eyelets. Eyelets? Eye holes? I don't know what it's called. You know what I'm talking about. And I was having a bit of a difficult time until I decided to stuff my boot with one of those rolls of uh, mesh uh, ribbon. And that's what helped me to get the ribboning or the lacing all the way up my boot. And I'm just, I fell in love with this. Oh, so, so, so much. So again, you can create all different colors. You can create it in different colors for, can you imagine giving this to your friends, to your girlfriends? What fun, or if you have like a, a Christmas wedding coming up, giving this it to your friends and, you know, as like and have like I don't know little liquor bottles and stuff in there for the bridal shower I think that would be so much fun so here I am just lacing up and making a bow at the top of my boot I had so much fun with this guys can you tell I just oh and so I, I just kept saying okay am I adding too much that's my biggest problem you know with shabby chic it's like it's is it ever too much maybe Sometimes, I don't know, because, you know, you don't want to make it tacky. So here I'm adding a little bit of a lacy flower to the front of my boot. I thought that was perfect. And then at the top of my boot, I thought it needed some more decor. I wasn't just going to plop that pin right there and, and leave it be. So I decided to create a bit of a flourish with the same fabric as the boot itself. And there you see, it's, I, I don't know, I thought it made it look very French with this, for some reason, very, oof, ooh la la. So here I have my little um, fabric flower that I'm going to attach to the cuff of my boot. And then of course, using some totally dazzling, cause it's totally dazzling. It's totally dazzled actually. And uh, yes, now is the time people, if you're going to get ready for a shabby chic Christmas, check out totally dazzled and be totally dazzling for Christmas this year. And there you have it, my beautiful vintage Victorian boot just for you. So let's put it all together.
Thank you again for stopping by and thank you once again to Liana DIY for inviting me to host this wonderful Christmas in July playlist. Please remember to check out the links below so you can see all of these wonderful ladies and their ideas. As always, thank you for spending time with me and I hope that you have a wonderful day, but most especially, stay safe, be kind, God bless each and every one of you, and remember to live the adventure. Until I see you again very soon, remember, like, share, and subscribe and come back for more.